that. We'll reconvening our meeting from closed session to open session at this point. What I'd like to do is have someone volunteer for Pledge of Allegiance, and we'll go to the next step. Thank you. I'll do it. <laughs> sure. All right. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you very much, Mr. Gardner. Okay, what I'd like to do now is um, we're going to adopt the agenda. And who's going to speak for that? There's a motion on the floor. Uh, I'd like to make a correction in the agenda. Please do. Um, on consent items 8, uh, 2A, Travis Dozier, on his assigned date. Um, it was supposed, it reads 8 12 2015, and it was supposed, it should read 8 17 2015. Okay. So we'll move to the top of the agenda with the with the Second. Yeah. There's a section on uh, second on the item. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. No action. Uh, our report to the report on action. If there was any action taken in closed session, there was no action taken. Okay. Thank you very much. We're going into the public hearing. And the public hearing would be the sufficiency of the special material compliance. Okay. Do I have anyone speaking on behalf or the item itself? Public. public hearing. Okay. So I don't hear any. I don't see any. And um, we sh we're going to close the public uh, hearing at this point. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item would be with is is the uh, communication presentation. I'm going to switch that over to our favorite favorite superintendent. Okay. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some acknowledgments tonight. I'm going to ask the board if we can all stand up. For Oh, sorry. I was slip, slip, slipping right behind you. Um, come up and give do uh, give our donors acknowledgments for your great contributions to our schools. In this particular case, we have received over 2,100 backpacks from our many donors um, in um, our community. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, two items that they're, um, all our donors will receive. They're going to receive a certificate of appreciation from our district. And so I'm going to hand this over to the principals and then she'll read it in a second and call you up. And also, um, we're going to receive a um, certificate from our state assembly for your donation and our contribution to our schools. We greatly appreciate this. So, uh, Mrs. Bonetta, say a few words to your donor. So last year, as my first year at principal at Roosevelt, um, we uh, began a partnership with First Presbyterian Church who decided to adopt the school. And so leading that um, project, three projects so far in, in, the, in the year, um, is Rita Harvey from First Presbyterian Church. So Rita, if you can join us right now. 
Thank you. Of appreciation, Salina City Elementary School District hereby awards a certificate to First Presbyterian Church for making a difference at Roosevelt Elementary School for your generous donation of backpacks with school supplies distributed to every second and fourth grade student and they also gave each child the polo shirt which is part of the school uniform. So Rita. this evening, I don't think. Taylor Farms um, called this afternoon and wasn't able to come. They also donated um, backpacks to Los Padres and to Roosevelt. And then we have um, Costco who also donated, I think, over 400 backpacks um, to Baronda Meadows. So um, let's give them a big <laughs> Taylor Farms in the house? May I call up Mr. Ramirez and Miss Bonetta back up? And you can come and hold more Taylor Farms laugh together. I was making a note to see who wasn't ah. here. <laughs> well, on behalf of Los Padres Elementary School, you've uh, been donating to all our first graders for so many yes. years. We do appreciate everything that you do for them. They are very excited and um, using their backpacks, especially since we're an all uniform school and black backpacks are part of the uniform. So we do appreciate everything that you do for us. Thank you so much. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to do it. I can tell you that much. The entire employees just get. Miles. Yes. And of course, on behalf of Roosevelt, um, who you also donated backpacks to all of our first graders filled with supplies, we appreciate it. And so now the kids have a little extra at home to do their homework. <laughs> is on Gordon, uh, Gordon, Road. Garden Road in um, Monterey, kind of right by the airport, has supported us year after year in a variety of different efforts of outreaches and the, the homeless kids Christmas party that's put on for about 500 of our families every year as well as backpacks and anytime we need anything they've always been there with their 10 different homeless ministries as outreach. So Deb Federico is here, she's the Director of Community Outreach and she and Rita and other uh, uh, directors of the community outreach from different faith communities know each other very well. So we'd like to present you with this beautiful plaque. Okay, and these are 
Certificate of Appreciation from Salina City Elementary School District uh, Family Resource Center hereby awards the certificate to you, Shoreline Community Church, for making a huge difference in the lives of so many homeless kids as a result of the Stuff the Bus campaign. Actually, it's not. this is not correct, but we'll fix it. Okay. It's, 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 it's all That's United Way. Then anyway, yeah. stuff the backpack. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you very, 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 so very much. Thank you, Sheila. And from the California Senate's office, this is a certificate of recognition also. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We very very welcome. which is all over Monterey County. So with that said, for the last, I don't know, it's been four or five years that we've received hundreds and hundreds of stuffed backpacks that go uh, to our homeless children. And one year we even had my horse trailer out front here. I don't know if some of you remember that. We had no way to get them over to the FRC. So I said, I'll oh, just bring our horse trailer and we'll st stuff them in the horse trailer and then bring them on over to the Family Research Center. So that was kind of funny. But Katie, we just want to thank you again, like many other organizations, and we really appreciate everybody in the community, and especially United Way, for supporting um, our homeless children in a variety of different ways, but one is through Stuff the Bus campaign. And by them having, to all of you actually, a, a backpack to start the school year, or when they come new into the district, or they've lost everything in their uh, storage, and they can't come to school in a uniform, or have school supplies or backpacks, those backpacks mean the world of difference for them, especially when they come in and they say, Mom, I'm going to get my own backpack. And I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty humbling when it means that much to them to get a new backpack. So it, it's, it's pretty wonderful. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And it's also it's from the State of California Senate office. And Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. So, President Kevin McWilliams could please come to the front. Actually, Dr. Kevin McWilliams, come to the front. He's one of our local renowned dentist in the area. So Kevin is the president of Santa of uh, Salinas Rotary Santa Lucia Club, which is kind of at George's where, where everybody meets. And this particular school year, um, they wanted to adopt Sherwood School in a couple of different ways. One is they wanted to find all the homeless kids that were identified last school year and provide them with a solid black stuffed um, backpack with also a nice little game in there for them to play and the Rotary Club came over and did the actual not only stuffing but they did the distribution as well to all the different children so the parents are appreciative the kids are appreciative and plus it was uniform color so we wanted to present this to you a certificate of appreciation for the Santa Lucia Club thank you okay you're welcome as well as the certificate from the Senate office Thank you. You are welcome. And then one other thing that we just met today is we have the Alice L Club, Alice L Rotary Club, and the Santa Lucia Club wrote a collaborative grant in which they're going to continue with the uh, the LEA plan of uh, Sherwood in their attendance, their uniforms, tardies, and increasing their reading scores by providing all the incentives on a weekly, monthly, trimester basis to help these help the administrators um, and the teachers give the incentive to the children to achieve, achieve these goals through PBIS positive you know behavior reinforcement so we met on that today came up with a variety of different strategies with their administration and we got the green light on that so we're very excited on that and they're going to support that particular school um, all year long so thank you very much for that Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, well, let's hear it from Wheeler. Do you want to talk a little bit about I do, if, okay. if, if I may. I was really hoping that Mr. Wheeler or a representative from Wheeler's Carpets could be here today. Um, it was a really special project. Mr. Wheeler came to us. He's actually a Loma Vista alumni, as are some of his family members. And he wanted to do something for all of our students. And um, we put our heads together. He came up with the idea of the, of the backpacks and, and having tools for students to be able to do their homework. And I didn't want to seem greedy. So I put together two lists. I put together the really should have list and the if you can, if you can <laughs> afford 560 of these lists. And um, when he and his team showed up on the first day of school with 560 backpacks filled with every possible thing we had on that list, it was, it was an amazing gift for all of our kids. And I had that small fear because not all big kids seem really grateful when they get a gift. Um, but the very first classroom we went into, they, the students just, uh, they lit up in a, in a real way and it was really special. So I was hoping he could take back our warm thanks to someone, but I'll make sure I do that on my own. But thank you, thank you for thanking him here publicly. This is Vonsetta. Um, I know that Costco's not here tonight, but would you like to say just a few words on their behalf? Of course. <coughs> Good evening, superintendent, board members. And yes, I would like to thank Costco. They donated a total of 450 backpacks to our first through fourth grade students. They were delighted as well to have received the backpacks. Um, we were very, very fortunate to have been selected at the school. They are our neighbors, so I said I'm hoping that next year we can over once again. So we've established that partnership. And like the students at the other schools, our students, our children were very happy, very excited. Very thankful. So thank you to Costco. Yeah, we'll, we're, we're gonna. I'll make sure I get okay. delivered to them. We are very, very grateful to our donors. Um, this is just one of many donations that we see throughout the year. But because it was a collective effort across many of our schools. We felt it was um, a great time to bring you to our board meeting and to celebrate your um, recognition um, for the great contributions you're making to our students. Thank you. So again, we hear a big <laughs> little bit of eclipse with the bat tax. It's just a minute long, and then we'll go into our next recognition. So, thank you. here at Roosevelt Elementary. We are so thankful that First Presbyterian adopted us last year. 
Um, according to the Coast Weekly, we are number two with the highest poverty rate of students here at Roosevelt. And so we are just very lucky that we are working with First Presbyterian and have established a strong partnership. And so on behalf of our staff and our students, we thank you for uh, today's backpack and polo shirt event. Virginia Garza Nunez to the podium, please. And um, we would like to recognize her and um, her assistants, Paula Wallen. Uh, Wallen, Wallen. Wallen. She is not able to be here tonight, but um, Virginia, on behalf of the California Department of Ed, you were awarded um, two local educational agencies, that means districts. <laughs> that met the initial CalPAS certification deadline for all six data collections, both in, um, that's an entire year, and let me just tell you, <laughs> one student can be, I don't know how many cells of information on a data sheet, so this is really not an easy feat when you have almost 10,000 kids that you're entering all this information on. But, um, and that you were able to resolve any anomalies um, to achieve the anomaly rate of less than 2% in our enrollment and that you maintain the quality needed to keep us, <laughs> number one, as a district um, and our student information system in CalPAS um, extremely accurate. This is from the State Department and so we wanted to award you this. <laughs> more students than for which they are being paid. This was done um, not just because teachers should be paid for their work, but also knowing that this benefited our students. Um, we worked with the district on that, this issue in the best interest of teachers and students. But at this time, I've learned um, that at one site, we have a teacher who, ha for about an hour or so of math instruction, has 15 students while the students from the other grade that she's teaching are going to other, to other classes, making their classes um, overloaded at about, uh, at over 36 students each. At another site, the principal um, overloaded um, a couple of other classes to accommodate the um, combination class at the site the students that were put into the overloaded classes were, um, these are her, um, words from an email, the lowest readers and the, in and the lowest English language learners. So not only were they um, loaded with more students, but they were given um, some of the 
more um, difficult students. Today I learned of another site at which teachers are at odds over the same type of issues. issue. Um, if the extra students are there for only part of the day, the teachers don't get paid for any of the extra work. And it's not just being in the classroom with the, um, that many more students every day, which takes a toll on teachers because it means more management issues, it means um, you know, trying to organize more students, some of whom you don't know that well, those kinds of things. But there's also extra work like running off materials, grading, reports, <coughs> all those kinds of things. And the other thing, though, is that the, these difficulties start to cause problems between teachers, teachers at the sites involved, and also between sites, difficulties in um, what's going on at one site and not going on at another site and so forth. Um, SEPC is asking that the district, district can discontinue the practice of having extra students in classes for parts of the day. Um, this is a practice which we feel is detrimental to both teachers and to the site climate, but also in the long run, we feel as if it's not in the best interest of our students. It's not an educationally sound practice. Um, students don't get the attention they need and deserve from their teachers because there's so many more students. And when, you know, the state has now, um, we had class size reduction for many years, then it kind of went by the wayside a bit because of the recession, but now it's coming back. So the state acknowledges that the smaller class sizes do help, but um, in this district, we have over 80 classes with 36 kids for over an hour. And um, we, we just ask that that stop. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else? Okay. We have the student chat right now. Uh, I don't see the CSEA is not present. Madam Superintendent, you have the floor. Well, I would just like to um, say that I was glad that last week we uh, completed our last back to school night. So all of our schools have um, had back to school night, and it's been really just a joy to um, attend all the back to school nights. I was able to make um, 13 out of 14 schools, but that was simply because four schools had them on the same night. It was literally impossible to get to all four schools uh, across town through traffic jams and everything else. But um, it's, it was a joy to go into the teachers' classrooms to see the different ways that teachers approach back to school. Some of you um, joined your grade levels together, others did individuals. Um, lots of innovation among um, use of technology um, for. Uh, some teachers and just the the presence of the students and the, the um, parents that were there really excited about what um, our classrooms and our schools have to offer. So that's pretty much my my comment is yay 18 back to school lights behind me. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> oh, you know what? One night, oh, the, the, yeah, the night that. Um, we had the four back to school nights. I think I clocked in 2.5 miles. So, <laughs> on my Fitbit, right? I can keep a track for, of that. For each school that you visit. No. Okay. okay. Board members. Do we have board members uh, reflecting? I do. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to say uh, I got an invitation to the USL uh, Music Festival uh, next month. I was looking forward to that, but uh, I will. I won't be able to be there. I'm going to be out of the country, uh, and I'm sorry. I'll miss some activities, but uh, I wanted to say I'm looking forward to the time when the district can afford to uh, have enough music teachers to teach instrumental music as well as vocal music. I know when some of the people sitting out there were in school, we had vocal uh, music teachers, and we had instrumental music teachers. We, in every, sc every school, had a band. 
anyway, I'm looking forward to a time when we can afford something like this again. Uh, so that's it for tonight. Thanks. I vote yes. Okay. Ms. Barnes. I have a couple of things too. Uh, first, I, I also wanted to compliment all the teachers at the great beginnings and very informative, all the back to school nights. It's really interesting. And I wanted to say something, especially to Jennifer Zanzo, she's here. Very, very excellent Spanish that she was speaking. So it was fun, fun to see her do it, uh, do the presentation of the parents in both languages. So bravo to her. And Thank you. Uh, oh, you are there. Okay. <laughs> And secondly, um, I was a tutor, in tutoring a student, a fifth grade student at Laurelwood uh, with a different company that doesn't work for us. And, I, <laughs> and anyway, she, she asked me to come and sit in on her, her conference, I mean her back to school night, and I did. And it was really, really excellent to sit there as, a, as kind of a parent, so to speak. And it was with Eldridge and Bush. Talk about a team. Those women are outstanding teachers, so I want to put a kudos out to them too. It's what they're doing and what all of you are doing and he hearing what the curriculum is and now now she doesn't have a pass so I guess I know exactly what's going on. And um, the, not the girls, but the tutor person. Anyway, on, and also um, lab, there's one other thing. Um, Monterey County Reads at the Panetta Institute put on on Friday night and most of the administrators were there. It was outstanding. I want to thank all the teachers, the volunteers, the principals for participating in our district and we had such excellent representation that it was really, really impressive and that every time they named off, named off the name it was our school and, and the great rewards that we got. And lastly, I, I also have some serious concerns about the combo classes. Um, I think we have to ensure that we give support materials and aids to help the teachers with this rigorous curriculum. I know it's really, really tough. It's hard enough to have a, a combo class, but now it's especially difficult. So, thank you. Mr. Kevin. What did you do? <laughs> you know, the visits. Uh, I, I, I uh, want to share with uh, my colleagues as well as the uh, administration, faculty, and, and uh, neighbors from here, is that uh, I did get a chance to visit uh, back to school night uh, my schools, which is uh, Gavilan and Kama, and uh, not only go there, but also visit. Visit, talk to parents, talk to faculty, talk to the custodian, uh, custodian and uh, you know people that work out uh, to keep that place clean. It's coming along good, both schools, and both schools understand. I read the school, school uh, plan as well, and they understand that it's hardball. It's hardball academically. And we, what I'm trying to do is encourage seniors in those neighborhoods and or their parents, the parents of the children, to be more engaged. And uh, I go door to door sometimes and just introduce myself, but at the same time ask them to be volunteers at the school. And of course, I'll do a background check on it. We have to do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, um, that was brief, but at the same time, we have uh, another item that uh, I don't foresee any uh, uh, previous concerns or, 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 or questions. No? Say none. Okay. Next item is with the uh, individuals uh, desiring to address the board. Uh, uh, on items that are not on the agenda, and that's for the record. You may step up. If there's more than one person, please get your get behind the, the speaker and then work your way up over here. We do have a notice. Everybody here at the table has this notice, but this is one of the greatest uh, opportunities for making sure that not only our school structure works in the community, the community works with us. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening. My name is Ronnie de la Peña. I am a community member here. Um, I work here, uh, live here, work here. Uh, and I'm a part of the committee uh, for Fiesta Familia, the desk of the Nacota Central. Uh, number one, welcome to the superintendent. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of information about our committee here. Uh, we've had this um, it's a Spanish based workshop for Hispanic families. Um, it is ran in Spanish. Um, all the paperwork is 
um, in Spanish, and um, our, um, our, our people that do um, attend our um, workshops are both Spanish and English speaking, but the workshops are ran in Spanish. So basically what it is, it's a parent, once again, parent conference uh, designed um, for uh, family members with children of special needs. Um, and they're set up in workshops. Um, this year we're going to have 11 workshops. We work closely with Ms. Uh, Chaydez, with Ms. Uh, Mancera. We are based at uh, Bronda Meadows Elementary School. And um, we provide resources is uh, basically what we do for the uh, family members. Um, I, myself, as the professional coordinator, invite um, our local resources to come and to be able to speak to the, um, the, uh, to the parents. If the resources that we do have for the people that do come, they speak English, we always have a translator in the room for them. And we have uh, social workers, we have doctors, uh, lawyers um, that touch bases about Social Security for the children's special needs. Um, immigration. Um, we have um, also uh, the chemicals in the uh, atmosphere with the chemicals that come and talk to the parents in regards to um, educating the parents. So basically what we do is we educate these, um, these uh, 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 Hispanic family members about um, what their local resources are and, and what how they can use it um, to their advantage to better help their child with special needs. Um, it is a day-long event. Um, it is from 8 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Um, we cordially invite all of you, of course, um, to come and um, come with us uh, and invite you to come. We serve uh, continental breakfast. We also serve a lunch. Um, and um, also um, we provide them with tote bags with information in there as well. And um, for this year, we have on our calendar that it is going to be, as you can see on your paper, for October 10th, um, they're at Veronica Middle School. And um, I kind of actually wanted to see if you guys had any questions. I know every year I've spoken about it, but this year, if there's any questions that you guys might have in regards to um, our organization or how we, or maybe some feedback that you've heard in regards to it or during public comment, we don't Oh, you don't back, like, don't but we can it. certainly communicate with you through email if we do that. would be great. Data. Okay. So, um, since I have a little bit more, um, last year we did have about 150 attendees. Um, to let you know, this is our third year with the district. And um, we've also been um, acknowledged by our state assembly, Mr. Bustamento, for our efforts. And we're all volunteers. Um, some of them have, um, some of them uh, members have uh, children with special needs, which is you know, their drive to, to better help our community. I myself have um, a special heart to be able to help our Hispanic family in our community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you can stay as long as you want. <laughs> but uh, we do need to go to the next one, the next item, which is consent agenda. Or well, consent items. Agenda items. Uh, do we have the public any comments or want to pull an item? Our board members first. Okay. No, say none. Public, none. I make a motion to approve the consent items. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Six zero. Is of the curriculum under informational items and, and it's a uh, single plan for <coughs> achievement for Boronda Meadows Spires Admission Park Schools. Okay, please. <coughs> Before us, thank you. Thank you, and uh, once again, good evening to everybody. Um, and I am Susana Manceda, the principal at Boronda Meadows Elementary School. I thank you for giving me this opportunity of sharing our school plan. 
Ms. Naranda will be getting the remote for you. Yes, she will. Thank you. Let me give it a try first. So, uh, I'm going to start off uh, with our demographics here. We are a very diverse um, school. We have a very diverse student population, total of enrollment of 789 students. Um, and as you can see, our subgroups below, I've enumerated them. Um, one thing I would like to point out is that um, in each of our subgroups, We've shown an increase, some type of an increase percentage-wise from last year to this year. Um, next is our goal number one, academics. Um, our goals, our school goals, one, two, and three are aligned with the district goals. So um, in terms of academics, I do want to highlight that we have um, funded a full-time intervention teacher. This is Chidas, and uh, that has allowed for us to support more students at Veranda Meadows. We have, she offers uh, a total of five sessions, so it's five classes. Um, and while she's offering the intervention, she's also supporting the regular, te regular ed teachers by minimizing the number of students in the classroom. So that's one of the highlights under academics. And we also offer a dual immersion program, which promotes high literacy. So uh, we have a K-6 strand now. It goes all the way through sixth grade. Goal number two, school climate and culture. Um, and right below the header is our school mantra. Be respectful, make good choices, and solve problems. Two of the areas that I'd like to highlight are the um, school-wide rewards incentive plan that we have over on the, let me see if I know how to Red. Well, you see the orange? That's our um, Veranda Meadows Golden Tickets. So the Golden Tickets, which are very popular, and those are given out to students for exemplifying the life skills of being respectful, making good choices, and solving problems. Um, and the students get to cash in their Golden Tickets at a student store, which opens up on Fridays. Every other Friday, we have a calendar, so you're welcome to come visit our student store. We also offer um, Jamba Juice and Starbucks cards. And below the golden ticket, you see the limo. That goes with the Accelerated Reader Incentive Plan. Last year, I briefly mentioned that some of our students um, got to ride a limo with me um, for uh, being triple crown, triple, triple crown winners. Um, we are a reading school or a reader school. We're highly promoting um, Accelerated Reader, which is a district, init uh, district initiative. So the district does support the Accelerated Reader Program and helps us with that, but we promote it at the site level and we fund the incentive plan. Our goal number three, parent community involvement. Uh, on the left-hand side, I have uh, different types of um, committees, activities that parents are part of. One of the areas that I'd like to highlight is the sports program. Um, Parents uh, get very excited to go watch their students play. And I would also like to thank our teachers because they are all volunteers. I have all volunteers who run our sports program, our year-long sports program. We offer volleyball, uh, like football, uh, basketball, co-ed, boys and girls, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, teachers are very committed to ensuring parent and community involvement. Very committed to doing that. Um, as well as we have a parent coordinator when I first arrived at Veranda Meadows, we had a parent coordinator that was a three-hour employee. We've gone from three hours over the course of the last two years to now this school year having her five hours. Um, and she is key in bridging uh, the parent, community, staff involvement. She is key. Um, and uh, one of the areas of focus for this year um, for her is attendance. That's a big one. Children aren't at school, they cannot learn, right? So she will be focusing uh, about five hours a week on attendance. I met with her today. We talked about our plan and how we're going to go about identifying students who need support um, related to attendance and the families and how we're going to reach out and so forth. 
And to the left, I have the community partnerships that we've established. And as you can tell, we have a long list, an extensive list of that. And I'm very happy to be working with them. Let me go back. There. And lastly, our vision statements. But I will not read the whole thing. I would like to highlight the highlighted words which are in blue. We are a school that's committed, school, community, and staff that's committed um, to students and we view them as a core of our community and we provide opportunities given that we are devoted to the success of all students. And we are respectful and we promote being respectful, making good choices, and solving problems. Any questions? Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to have those padres coming next. Yeah, there we go. Good evening, President Garcia, Superintendent Martinez, board members. Um, it's a great, great honor for me to be here and speak to you. Uh, so you look at this slide, our uh, population of students has actually been increasing. It almost seems like every day we're getting a, a child. It's incredible. Our uh, numbers up there as far as the Latino and the Hispanics, as you can see, are uh, quite high. But we do have other students there. For our um, school plan goal number one, I'd like to highlight three uh, areas. The Saturday Academy, NASA Siemens collaboration that we have with Hartnell College. We run two of those during the fall and the spring. This fall, we're already uh, set up to start on October 10th and focusing our students with the highest need. Uh, as a school and a community there, at, um, with the support of the School State Council, we decided to uh, pay for a full-time academic coach so they can actually provide all that assistance that the, um, the teachers need in order for them to work hard with the, um, the new math curriculum as well as uh, everything else that goes with uh, the new standards. And finally, with uh, that, the science teacher. We're setting up and uh, we're pretty much, tomorrow we're actually gonna be getting with uh, having the students come into the science classroom, going through the science lab um, rules so that they can become familiar and we'd be, um, hopefully within the following week or so, we'll be done with that and get the students in doing some experiments. In uh, goal number two, I'd like to highlight um, the, the Just Run. And this activity, um, students, parents, families enjoy it so much. This last year, we actually took first place in uh, participation, which meant that the school got $1,300 so that we could put back for the students. Um, also, we're hosting uh, Yosal there at uh, Los Padres, and we have a waiting list. So we're uh, working very diligently, uh, Ms. Vargas and I, to clear out another room so we can have more space and they're working on getting more uh, um, instructors to help out and clear out that waiting list. On the third goal, we, on the left-hand side, if you've noticed there, you've got the parents. Um, we have one of the biggest things is that teachers, primarily for the dual immersion um, programs, are uh, leading uh, parent trainings to give them strategies on how to help their children with their homework, particularly now that uh, the mathematics is a new way of thinking. Also, we're going to continue with our family nights, literacy, science, and math. Uh, particularly in science, having the science teacher, we want to be able to compete in the county uh, science fair. And again, on the uh, right-hand side, you can see our community members. And as far as uh, Los Padres' uh, vision, mission, is to provide a nurturing environment with academic excellence and quality instruction so students become lifelong learners. And with that, I'm entertaining any questions. 